Olin, and kind regards to all who care and dare to listen. In this greeting, I use the word kind, let's say, ironically. Truth is, I don't know how kind I can be with certain things I want to say, certain things I can say. And I don't know if the truth is kind. What if the truth, in some cases, is brutal and unkind, but it's still the truth? Anyway, with those considerations, I'd like to ask you if you know what gaslighting is. I wonder how many people in the world today do know. You can go look it up if you don't. And there are various definitions. But let me give you mine just off the top of my head. Gaslighting is a technique of psychological manipulation. And it works by confusing someone and making them doubt their own perceptions. So gaslighting is a technique, a psyop, you could say, certainly an accessory that is used to cause someone to, or to actually put someone in cognitive dissonance by making them question themselves and question their own perception. And there are many examples I'll give you a trivial one. Suppose there is a malicious husband who wants to gaslight his wife for whatever reason. And so she has the tendency to put the car keys in a little dish at the entry to the house when she returns from driving somewhere. And so the husband knows this and he takes the car keys and he puts them on the kitchen counter because he knows there's a situation coming up where she's pressed for time and she needs to get out of the house. So she's expecting to walk down the corridor to the front door, take her car keys from the dish on the table at the side of the door and go out. She does that and the car keys aren't there. She panics a little. She comes back to the husband who happens to be standing in the kitchen. He is staging this event. And he says to her, she says, oh, well, where are my car keys? I've got to go. And he says, well, right where you put them. Oh, but I always put them in the dish on the side table, in front of the door. No, you put them on the kitchen counter. Look, that's where they are. That's gaslighting. And of course, the examples could be extended into the hundreds. When you look at what's happening in the world today, when you look at what the masses are being told through the mainstream media, you could say, you could wonder, you would do well to ask yourself, hey, is someone planning to exterminate a large number of the human race in the gaslighting ovens? And indeed, the answer to that is yes. So gaslighting is a big topic, and you're certainly an ignorant and deficient human animal if you don't know about it and if you can't detect it when it's happening in your face. But in this short talk, I'd like to connect the technique of gaslighting to an item from the legacy, the tradition of the Abrahamic religions. Now, one of the outstanding documents from that tradition 
is the Ten Commandments. You find it in chapter 20 of the book of Exodus. And there are, of course, many translations into English of these Ten Commandments said to be dictated by the off-planet Father God to be passed down to the human races as rules of obedience, moral rules. And some people hold these rules in really high regard. They consider the Ten Commandments to present a template for acceptable moral behavior. Now, of these ten, there is one which I have noted many years ago, which seems to be little discussed. It doesn't really seem to come up very much. And it struck me as curious that one of the 10 would be less current in people's minds. And that would be the ninth commandment. There are various translations, of course. And here's one of them. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Have you heard that before? When was the last time you heard that? When was the last time it ever came up in a personal situation, family, friends, a social situation? When was the last time you ever heard anyone in the media quote that commandment? Now, in my humble view, needless to say, being an Gnostic heretic, I'm not someone who follows the Ten Commandments, but in my view, this is the most significant of them all. And in order to tell you how I see it, let me paraphrase it. What does it mean to bear false witness against someone? Well, in legal language, it means to accuse them falsely of something that they haven't done. It means to allege something of an individual that is untrue or to allege something of a situation in the world that is untrue and deliberately wrong. That is what it means to bear false witness to an individual or as well to speak falsely and make false allegations against a situation. So here is an example. Let's say that I identify as a non-binary alpaca. Clear enough, and anyone can understand that. And I could go about my business in life, living out that identity, all on my own, and not necessarily insisting that anyone else recognize and respect that identity, you see? I could live out my identity as a non-binary alpaca in that way, not make a case out of it, not make a big cause out of it. But suppose I wanted to make a big cause out of it for one reason or another. How could I do that? Well, I could violate the ninth commandment and I could bear false witness against my neighbor that is to say, against anyone that I encounter in the course of life. And you might be that person. And I might come up to you and say, okay, I identify as a non-binary alpaca. Any problem with that? And you might reply, no, not at all. That's what you choose to do. And I really don't care one way or another but I'm not going to attack you or harm you for doing that. 
And then I reply, well, you might not, but many people do. Do you know, in the world today, in different societies and cultures, in different countries, that there is an enormous attitude of hatred toward nine binary alpacas. Do you know that how many of them every day suffer terribly from discrimination, ridicule, mockery, and how they are in many cases brutally attacked and beaten? There is such a terrible situation in the world due to the oppression of non-binary alpacas and the suffering that it causes to them is immense. How do you like that? So what am I doing when I violate the Ninth Commandment in that way? I'm gaslighting you. I'm falsely alleging something that, in fact, is not true. I'm falsely accusing the world at large for causing enormous suffering to non-binary alpacas, you see? And as long as that allegation I'm making, that false allegation, bearing false witness, stands, as long as you or anyone allows it to stand, then the technique of gaslighting works. Another example, and I'll end with this one, and you can probably see this one coming. I heard some people saying a while ago, and it ain't over yet, not by a long shot, don't be fooled. I heard them saying that there was an horrific pestilence, which they called the bunny bug, ravaging the planet. And they alleged in many ways and brought forth many documents and the testimonies of experts to show that the way we live and associate with each other socially, the way we transact our family affairs, our intimate affairs, the way we pursue our livelihood, all of that has to change and all of that has to be regulated by strict rules of prevention in order to save lives from this horrific pestilence, the bunny bug. And I don't know if you're anything like me, I doubt it, but you may be like me in this respect, that you checked your perceptions, you checked your sanity, and you looked around and you said, huh, I don't see any evidence of this massive, extremely contagious and extremely lethal pestilence. I don't, I don't see any evidence of it anywhere. My perceptions don't show me that it actually exists, yet I am hearing from many different quarters and many different people the allegations that it exists. Oh, you know what? I think I'm being gaslighted. I think I'm being herded into one of the ovens of gaslighting, and that's not the only one. Of course, you know that. But that is a really, really big oven with a huge capacity and a very wide door. And due to certain human animals bearing false witness against others, many, many have voluntarily walked into the door of that oven. Clear enough? Would you say 
that it's fair to say, based on common sense, it's fair to say, in the attitude of simple sanity, that false allegations of this kind have been made and are continually being made deliberately and enforced in every way possible. And so the violation of the ninth commandment of the Ten Commandments is a most serious matter in the world today. If I choose to identify as a non binary alpaca, all right, that's one thing. That's one person. And that's a matter that stands on its own terms. But if I then turn around and falsely allege that there is enormous hatred in the world against non-binary alpacas, causing them great suffering, and insist that you do something about it, or insist that you go along with my plan to do something about that falsely alleged oppression, that is another matter altogether. In conclusion, I can say Strange as it may seem that the recognition of the value and importance and validity of the Ninth Commandment could be a really good thing in this world. Can you see that? If some people took that rule of behavior seriously and acted consistently, then they would not make false allegations against others or falsely allege that a certain situation exists in the world when it doesn't. And at the same time, there would be a responsibility attached to observing that commandment. Not only do you yourself observe it, but you would take a stand against those who don't. In other words, there's a moral responsibility attached to that commandment. And were you to observe that and stand up for that commandment, well, who knows? It might go away It might take us away, ahead, a big step ahead, into what some people, who, by the way, happen to be the authors of that commandment, call the correction of the world. Enough said.